Hi, I'm Sonja Engnert. Welcome to the second Flutter video, which is Airplane Design Tutorial number 15. I will continue where I left off in the last video and address the question on how one can find out what the critical flutter speed of an airplane is. I have to warn you, it's not easy. The aeroelastic stability investigation includes a ground vibration test together with its evaluation as well as flutter calculations using the airplane manufacturer's data for airframe stiffness and mass distribution. This work is usually performed by flutter experts. Afterwards, the manufacturer performs flutter flight testing. A freedom of flutter substantiation by analysis based on ground vibration test or by flight test alone is not sufficient because neither of the two methods can be regarded as 100% accurate. A ground vibration test is performed on the finished airplane. The airplane is supported by soft springs or airbags that have to have a lower resonance frequency than the lowest one of the airplane. During this test, all the frequencies are determined at which the airframe will vibrate and resonate. This is done by attaching exciters on various parts of the structure that shake the component at different frequencies. Accelerometers attached all over the airframe measure the responses. That means there are a lot of wires to run from the airframe to the recording equipment. The goal is to find the frequencies at which the amplitudes of the airframe parts are highest. These are the resonance or eigenfrequencies. Every airframe has multiple resonance frequencies for different modes. The description of a mode includes which part of the airplane is involved, for example wing bending and a number, depending on the resonance frequency. The latter differ by how many nodes there are. The first wing bending mode has only one node in the center. The higher the frequency and mode number is, the more nodes there are. In the location of a node, the amplitude of the structure is zero. Besides symmetric modes, there are anti-symmetric modes, and they are divided into control surfaces, free or fixed. In addition to bending modes, there are twisting modes. So altogether, there can be a lot of modes for one airplane. This picture shows the symmetric wing second bending mode of a glider in color and the undeflected shape in gray. The GVT starts with the lowest frequency and continues with increasing frequencies in the attempt to identify all the vibration modes of the airplane. The highest frequency to which to test depends on the design dive speed. The higher it is, the higher will be the frequencies to excite. For an airplane with a VD of more than 200 knots, the frequency range for the various components may be as high as 150 Hz. The direction of the excitation can be in X direction, which is longitudinal, or in Z direction, which is vertical. Modes can couple with each other if their resonance or eigenfrequencies are close together. Some modes are more likely to couple, for example the fuselage vertical bending moment can couple with the elevator, or the wing torsional mode can couple with an aileron rotation mode. Separately, the modes may cause oscillations, but these are normally damped so that they die down quickly after being excited. Flutter happens when the eigenfrequencies of two oscillations are close together so that their motions reinforce themselves mutually. When that happens, the amplitudes will increase with each oscillation up to a point where the amplitude is big enough to break the structure. Once the airframe has been mapped in the GVT, the results are used as the input for the actual flutter analysis. The resulting output consists of a number of theoretical damping values with associated airspeeds and flutter frequencies. The most important plot is damping versus equivalent airspeed. This example shows four curves that can be found for the different frequencies that translate into airspeeds. Curve 1 is very stable. Curve 2 has a slight trend towards instability but stays below the critical value of zero damping. Curve 3 crosses the line into the unstable region. Here it depends if the structural damping is sufficient to suppress flutter. Curve 4 is clearly unstable and crosses the zero damping line with a steep slope. In actual flight, 
there may be only a few knots between completely stable and extremely unstable destructive flutter. This speed is then the critical flutter speed. This speed must be at least 1.2 times VD, the design dive speed. VNE will be about 10% less than VD to have enough margin. During the flutter analysis, the amount of mass balance for the control surface can be varied and the effect on the critical flutter speed evaluated. This way it can be avoided to have to add more weight than necessary. The airframe stiffness and mass distribution can also be varied by analysis to find way to increase the critical flutter speed if it is too low. A typical deficiency is the lack of stiffness in the control system. The final evaluation is done by flight test. The airplane is loaded to the worst case configuration, which may be with full fuel for wing tanks, because any large mass that is far away from the rotational axis can lower the eigenfrequency and therefore the critical flutter speed. At slow speed, the pilot can attempt to excite flutter by pulsing the stick and rudder pedals. The excitation will be performed in those speed ranges where a coupling of modes was predicted by the analysis, typically at intervals of a few knots. This does not work well at higher speeds and frequencies. Here a small exciter, which can be a rotating mass with an imbalance, is attached to the, wing, to the tip of a wing or tail. It should run at different RPM and therefore excite different frequencies. The pilot can verify freedom from flutter by noting the absence of vibrations up to VD. In addition, it is useful to attach accelerometers to the airframe to measure and record the response at various speeds. This is particularly important if the calculated damping curve approaches the zero damping line anywhere. If the testing is getting near a zone of reduced damping, the recorded data from each test point will be evaluated to see if the amp airframe amplitudes increase before proceeding to the next data point. You need to understand that the airspeed that is important to flutter is a true airspeed, not the indicated or calibrated airspeed. If, for example, the critical flutter speed was shown to be 237 knots true airspeed, we go backwards from here. First, the safety factor of 1.2 is applied to get to VD, the design dive speed, which is then 198 knots true. VNE must again be at least 10% lower than VD, so VNE is 178 knots true. You can safely fly the airplane to 178 knots calibrated airspeed at sea level, but with increasing altitude, the speed would have to be reduced in order not to exceed the true airspeed limit. This is a bit complicated for the pilot and is usually done this way only for gliders or for airplanes with electronic displays, which automatically calculate the correct VNE for each altitude. For airplanes with a mechanical airspeed indicator, the manufacturer will usually define a lower constant calibrated airspeed VNE for low altitudes, typically below 12,000 feet, which in this case would be 146 knots calibrated. The pilot then has to memorize only one VNE, unless he flies at 12,000 feet, 146 knots calibrated equals 178 knots true. Above this altitude, the speed limit becomes a true airspeed limit of 178 knots and the calibrated VNE has to be reduced accordingly. The results of the aeroelastic investigation are only applicable to the airplane as tested. If modifications are made that reduce the stiffness of the structure or the control system, the investigation or analysis will have to be repeated. Other modifications that can lower the critical flutter speed are increasing the control surface hinge moments or the addition of a last large mass outboard on wing or tail like tip tanks. A common mistake that is often made in the field is repainting a control surface without verifying that the hinge moment is still within the limits specified by the manufacturer or that, for example, a trim tab was added, which of course adds weight aft of the hinge and increases the hinge moment. Anytime the hinge moment of a control surface is increased, the critical flutter speed is lowered. The problem is, you don't know by how much. 
The only safe way to bring the hinge moment back to where it is supposed to be is to add mass balance in front of the hinge or, if that is not possible, remove the extra paint or weight from the surface. Enough talking for today, I'm going flying. See you in the next video, which will be on airplane modes.